Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flying Miata Garage. Today in part three of our BBR installation series, we're gonna talk about downpipes. All right, if you were with us for part two of our video series on this BBR install, you saw us remove the factory Mazda manifold, and that contains the primary catalytic converter. Now we need this primary catalytic converter both to maintain carb compliance and to work with the tune provided. Now when you go to purchase your BBR turbo kit, you're given three options as far as your downpipe is concerned. Option one is we can send along with your kit a prefabricated downpipe that includes a brand new Mazda cat. Option two is you can wait till you get to this point in the install. You can send us your factory manifold and we will attach the cat to a BBR downpipe upper section and we'll send it back to you. And option three is we send you the BBR upper section and you weld it to your own cat. Now, if you chose either prefabricated downpipe option, you don't need to stick around for this assembly video. You can go ahead and skip to video four. Now we're gonna cover the steps to get the downpipe fabricated. Now in your case, you're gonna have to do a lot of these steps on the car. That way you end up with a downpipe that fits correctly. Now we have access to a jig here at the shop. We're gonna go ahead and use that jig for one main reason. We want you to be able to see what we're doing. If I were to try to do the same stuff on the car, you likely wouldn't be able to see it very well. So even though we are doing this on a jig, we are gonna cover the steps necessary to do this on the car. All right, now let's get ready to separate our cat. To do so, I'm gonna take off these heat shields and remove our primary O2 sensor. So for the heat shields, I need a 10 millimeter socket. For the O2 sensor, I've got a 7 8 O2 sensor style wrench adapter. So you may notice it's a little juicy down here. Uh, that's because I had to spray the O2 sensor with some penetrating oil. I originally had a hard time getting it broken loose and it was starting to get a little sticky. So you may need to do the same if you experience that. All right, here we are in our tool room and I've got our manifold mounted up in our bandsaw getting ready to cut off the cat. Now you might need to use a different tool if you don't have a bandsaw available. You can use a chop saw if it has a proper metal cutting bit or you might need to use something more handheld like a rotary grinder. Uh, Dremel might be a little tedious. I don't recommend a plasma cutter because we are right next to our cat material and you don't wanna get any slag on it. And I really don't recommend scissors either. So where are we gonna make our cut? If you kind of look at the side profile here, there's a little bit of a dip right before this weld here. Now our cat material ends right on right here and we wanna stay away from that. We don't wanna cut into that. So typically we wanna cut it right where it, it humps back up. And that typically is right on the middle toward the edge of this weld. And again, just like anything else, it's easier to cut off a little bit more if you need to than to undercut and end up ruining something. So we're gonna make our cut here soon. And you can see we're lined up we're right about the middle of this weld. So we'll get our safety glasses on. All right, as you can see, we've got a nice little border before we're actually at our cap material. So I'll probably just clean up this edge with a wire wheel and then we'll be ready to do some test fitment.
All right, now our cat is ready with a nice fresh metal edge to weld to. And as far as our old manifold, it's no longer required. You can throw it away, recycle it, hang it on your wall, give it to the neighbor's kid, do something with it. Um, but we'll go get this tested on the car now. All right, here we are back at the car and we're ready to test fit some components, get things mocked up for some tack welding. So for this part, we're gonna need our upper section, upper down pipe section, the cat that we just liberated. We're gonna need to fetch out of our parts bin the bracket that mounts the cat to the block and the original hardware. We're gonna need to do this from underneath the car. So let's get our jack removed from holding the engine up and then we'll go ahead and raise the car up and get some things put in place. Now we're gonna go through the steps to show you how to weld up your downpipe. Now I'm not gonna necessarily show every step all the way through because remember, we're gonna be welding ours at the bench so you can see it but I will at least cover the fundamentals of what is necessary for you to do this. So we're gonna start with our downpipe upper section. We have the car up on the lift and I've added a jack stand to raise the engine again. Remember, we still have our passenger side motor mount nut undone and I've lifted it that 20 to 30 millimeters to be able to have a little bit better access putting the downpipe into position. So now going through the natural exhaust passageway here, we're gonna carefully get the downpipe up into place. Now, if I was getting ready to fabricate this, I would go ahead and lower the car down and I'd fully bolt the downpipe upper section to the turbine outlet. Now, if you hadn't already taken care of it when you went to tighten your downpipe, we did go ahead and lower this jack so the engine is now back onto its mounts. We have our cat section here. And as you can see, I've loosely attached the engine block bracket to the cat with its factory hardware. Got the other factory hardware to attach it to the block in my hand, ready to go. Now we're gonna get the cat inserted into the downpipe section. and get this bracket bolted to the block. And I would get those just snugged up, but not completely tight. And at this point, what you're gonna wanna do is grab your mid pipe. You're gonna wanna install it into the car and just make sure that everything lines up. If everything looks good, go ahead and tighten the hardware on this cap bracket both to the block and to the cat. That will make sure that everything is held in place nicely. And at this point, you can get ready to do your tack welds. Now for the tack welds, this gets a little tricky because you have limited access. So you're gonna just wanna find any area that you have access and you're gonna wanna just add a tack weld or two in each spot. You wanna make sure you have enough tack welds that things aren't gonna come apart as you remove the downpipe from the car because at this point, we'll remove the mid pipe, we'll unbolt this bracket, unbolt the downpipe from the turbine housing, and we'll take out the downpipe as one piece and we'll weld it at the bench. And since we have a jig, we're gonna go ahead and do that whole thing at the bench. All right, we're over at the welding table and all set up with our jig. Everything is bolted down tightly. Now, when you're welding your cat, you wanna make sure that you have your welding equipment properly set up for welding stainless. So we have our machine all set up and ready to go. So I will get to welding. Now we're all done welding, 
but we're gonna leave this on the jig to cool for a little while so it doesn't warp. Now, if you're watching this video, it means that you either purchased the BBR kit to weld your own downpipe, or you're considering that option. If you do want to avoid the headache of having to fit everything into the car and line things up just right and do all the tack welds and then weld it at the bench, if you wanna avoid all that, we'll do it for you. Um, we'll even do it on this very jig. You just have to select that option when you purchase the kit. Now, if you've already purchased the weld your own downpipe option kit, and you're starting to feel a little overwhelmed either by watching this video or by trying it yourself, go ahead and give our CSR department a call and we'll see about getting you upgraded to having us weld the cap for you. All right, that just about does it for this video where we've covered fabrication of our downpipe. Stay tuned with us for our next video in the series, video four, where we're gonna cover some of the other turbo installation bits. We're gonna be covering installing the water lines, installing the downpipe we just fabricated, and installing another intercooler pipe. So stay tuned with us. Um, thanks again for watching. If you do have any questions during your install, please give us a call or send us an email, talk to our CSRs, they'd be happy to help you out. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.